Now, Biren is uh, going to uh, tell us about the uh, age limits, the indication in the elderly patients. Thank you very much for the invitation to the JECO Congress. Um, low back and radicular back pain are common causes and functional impairment uh, and an ability to perform and essential activities in daily living in elderly patients. So thus prompt recognition and treatment of back pain in geriatric population is critical. <clears throat> Currently, there are more than 16.7 million people living aged in France aged 60 years and older. So this number is projected to increase to over 22 million um, in the um, time by 2030. In Germany now, we have uh, 23 million people living in aged 60 and older, and this number is projected to increase to over 33 million by 2030. So as the number of elderly patients continues to increase, there will be an associated increase in disorders of the spine as well. And this will present a unique challenge to physicians as they weigh the additional risks of operative treatment against reducing disabling pain and improvement in quality of life. A study published uh, last year describes the results of treatment with cervical artificial disc replacement in patients over the age of 65 to a group of patients under 40 years. The conclusion of the study was that the artificial disc replacement was equally effective for patients over 65 years old and those under 40 years in clinical improvement. And our own experience results of the study is identical with our clinical experience, although we use a different type of prosthesis. For example, <clears throat> there's a patient, 64-year-old 60, male, with a chondrosis, osteochondrosis, and with a weakness of the triceps of both sides, neuroforum stenosis C56 and C67. Um, initially, we treated the patient conservative with uh, physiotherapy, uh, local injections, and uh, injections near to the nerve root. Um, we typically go uh, from anterior and take the bone spurs from, from, the, from the anterior <coughs> aspect, and we, um, we seal the bone with bone wax to avoid any kind of hypertrophic ossifications, um, end up by distracting the disc, the vertebra, clean up the, end spa the, the spaces, clean up the, the posterior parts of the disc, measure the midline and uh, the, the footprint of the disc, uh, do the oncoforamen, open up and insert the disc. So this is a typical case for the patient aged over 60 years. But what about lumbar artificial disc replacements in elderly patients? We see more or less of these changes and diagnosis in the treatment of older, elderly patients. For the sake of simplicity, I have identified a simple division of the still indications and the contraindications using auto traffic light. This has no general validity and should rather be understood as my personal guideline. I would like to take out the bone density here as it has been a concern of us lately. Most of us are familiar with the problem of secondary subsidence of the prosthesis, which in most cases is related to a low bone density. 2006, Bertagnoli published a study in which routinely he opened prophylactic, uh, does a vertebroplasty. He performed this uh, during surgery and used five to 10 milliliters of a special kind of bone cement um, to, to strengthen the, the vertebral body before implanting the, the disc. Uh, but Agnoli comes to the conclusion that the use of the special bone cement in patients which have less bone density or less quality uh, reduces the risk of subsidence or loosening of the disc. This study was carried out with a non-compressible ball and socket prosthesis, and the question arises whether such a recommendation can become general valid. It has not been clarified whether whisker-elastic prosthesis pose a lower risk of subsidence. But we made our own analysis without using bone cement. For example, this 70-year-old man 
um, from the US. He came uh, with a severe back pain and collapse of the disc in L3-4 and L4-5. Previous surgery from the back in L4-5 for decompression. He was a semi-professional wakeboarder and uh, didn't have, want to have fusion. So he ended up with a double level artificial disc. And uh, as well, this 62-year-old uh, female patient with severe back pain was treated with two level artificial discs. You may see the posterior hangover of the osteophytes in the back. If there is no compression on the neurological structures, we try to avoid cutting the bone there because we want to avoid having hypertrophic ossifications near to the neurological structures. So all patients presented with disabling discogenic low back pain with or without radicular pain. The so involved segments range from L3 to S1. This small analysis involved 22 patients treated with the LPSP, viscoelastic artificial disc, and patients in whom there was no evidence of uh, spinal canal stenosis and with minimal or no facet joint degeneration were included. Patients were assessed preoperatively and the outcome was evaluated as well three months, six months, and 12 months postoperatively with the VIS, the OD, and the patient satisfaction scale. So today, elderly people live longer and have more active lifestyles. Factors such as the ability to tolerate surgery, rehabilitation, life expectancy, and overall health should be discussed when deciding treatment options for elderly patients with symptomatic spinal disease. In conclusion, from overall florable results obtained in our evaluation, I strongly believe that the total disc replacement is a good treatment option for degenerative disc disease of the spine in elderly patients, provided the proper criteria are adhered to in patient selection. The indication should be checked in elderly patients as well as in young patients. It is particularly important to pay attention to the criteria. Until further findings are reported, we cautiously recommend the use of artificial disc replacement and the treatment of chronic discogenic low back pain in elderly patients 60 years and older in whom bone quality is adequate in the absence of, of spinal canal stenosis. Thank you. Thank you for this excellent paper. We have seen that uh, uh, spine surgeons tend to change their uh, attitude regarding grid deformities. But for this replacement, the mind are a little bit changing because in France, uh, the limitation was uh, 59 years in our protocol at the beginning. Uh, I think your presentation is very balanced regarding this. There is a, a question about this preventive or uh, vertebroplasty. Perhaps some colleagues or Svante or uh, our colleague from Hong Kong. Do, do, what, what is your opinion in cases where you, you could uh, propose uh, cementation or Rishke also perhaps he has the experience of uh, uh, additional vertebroplasty. What is your, your feeling? I'm Svante Bay from Sweden. Uh, I haven't used that uh, method since the fixation of the prosthesis depends on osseointegration. And I don't feel that I really know if that would take place, whether I augment the vertebra with bone cement prior to surgery. That's why I've kept off it. So if, if the bone quality isn't good enough for a disc for me, I won't do a total disc replacement. But that might be the, not the last version, but that's where I am today. If, yeah, if um, I have a patient of a low BMD, I'll often um, use a drug called uh, teriparatide for TO for six months and withhold the surgery. Um, occasionally, we've seen patients with um, hemangiomas in the vertebral body where there's a structural weakness in the bone. Um, I know some people may bone graft it, but what I tend to do is I fill that in with some bone cement 
I think it's adequate for the fixation. Um, it's the bone cement is uh, put in at the time of the surgery. I think the bone cement may actually physically bond to the end plate or, or near it. Um, I don't think it actually affects the circulation to the end plate much. So I believe that the bonding is still as good. I've not seen it come loose with the bone cement. Yes, I'm um, Burkhard Rischke from Zurich. Uh, from my personal experiences, uh, since a lot of uh, artificial disciplines been since uh, 20 years, I do a uh, vertebroplasty in uh, all my patients with um, detected bone um, with osteoporosis or osteopenia. Um, as I have seen some uh, subsidence of the implants also with the viscoelastic prosthesis in the past. So I, but I do, I'm using only the natural uh, calcium phosphate bone cement because I am convinced that this will be integrated in the metabolism of the osteocytes and can reinforce the architecture which we have seen in the follow-ups. The normal, the normal um, PMMA bone cement um, used to heat up until 70 to 90 degrees, so it will destroy the bone structure. So I totally agree using the calcium phosphate um, bone cement or uh, just uh, taking some graft, um, just in case. So I try to avoid any kind of uh, PMMA cement. Okay. Bon. I think the time has come to conclude. So three uh, take home message, one per presentation. Once the uh, sagittal balance of elderly patient is not the same as in young patients. So this do, we do not have the same adaptation rules as for a uh, young patient. The second take home message from Jean-Patrick is that indications for scoliosis treatment should be changed and we shouldn't only think in terms of posterior approach and be only the tenant of a, a reconstruction at all uh, prices. And uh, there are limitations. Uh, the limitations of ADRs is, are not the one we think of, particularly in the cervical area. For the next year, the next message will be the disc replacement in scoliosis. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you to all the speakers. And now they will enjoy skiing. <laughs>